Now, when it comes to making a loadout for any champion, you really need to be familiar with their base kit before going in and reading the cards. So please do some reading before trying out the champion and building a loadout for them. So maybe, maybe you've come across a situation where you were just beaten so badly by maybe Moji or maybe even on lower elo Zin or maybe even Sky. And then when you went to try out those champions, you didn't do good with them. And even when you tried to make a loadout for them, you couldn't understand how to evaluate good cards from bad cards. Now, that's kind of normal given how complex some of the cards in the game are, plus how many bugs and mistakes are in the texts. So I can understand that people might not like making loadouts on their own. However, even if you import someone else's loadout you might want to tweak the numbers or switch out a card or two or even the filler just because it doesn't feel it, uh, fit your play style okay so let's go ahead and talk about when you would avoid a card no matter what okay now if you're familiar with io this is gonna be easier to understand Please, if you are willing to play IO, we're going to need you to understand the base kit. So you cannot just go ahead and press Q in the game or in the shooting range and read these. This is only the short version. You're better off going on the web and reading the game wiki for all the details. However, even the wiki has mistakes. Now we're going to cover those two since this video is primarily about IO. So let's go ahead and edit a loadout that we don't need right now and show you which cards you would never ever run and why. We're gonna start from the left and talk about each card that is bad. So I'm going to be skipping cards that are usable, okay? So Feral Strength. This card simply adds more health to Luna. Luna already has 4000 health, which is more than enough for her to live enough when there isn't a counter for her. So Luna will die to Dredge if you, if you put her on the point. He'll just use broadside and she'll die once he shoots her one more time after one broadside. That will not be helped by Feral Strength. You're not going to waste one point on it or five to make luna tank here that's just a waste of points okay so this is a bad card because at net value it adds zero net value because no situation would come across that you would need more health on luna why well simple enough you're going to have your redeploy ready by the time that Luna gets low on health in most situations when you're playing Io correctly. So basically, if you put Io, I mean, sorry, if you put Luna out of combat, she'll heal herself and you won't have to wait the full 18 seconds for you to be able to summon her again after she died. So this card is bad because you cannot make use of it effectively. Using it as a filler is acceptable if you hate the other fillers which are good and better, okay? So the three fillers on IO are Broken Deity, it makes you able to deploy Luna from a flank lane on the point, Spirit Arrows, which effectively means you reduce the cooldown of your re redeploy, you know you can reposition Luna, by half a second each second per point, okay? Well, it's good as a filler, but we're going to be talking about a playstyle that has uh, this card at 3 points, which is kind of not a good playstyle for ranked. It's good for non-ranked games, okay? And the last filler that's good on IO is actually Celestial Body because of a specific scenario that we're going to be talking about when we address another bad card. So, this card bad because you'll never be able to get value out of it in real gameplay in ranked next one is lunar connection now this card simply says after you've lost luna instead of waiting 18 seconds you reduce those 18 by whatever number you're running this card why is this bad well not because the card itself is bad getting luna is getting your utility back Okay, so the concept is good. 
however you simply do not have the budget for a card like this not even at one point okay now you might have seen in the ppc that pro players actually bought chronos one of the worthless items on io actually just so that they can redeploy luna over and over when she dies faster each tier of chronos is 1.8 seconds of the cooldown okay that's more than this but it costs credits except uh, if you've read the guide or if you ask any io player they're going to tell you io can work without any items she doesn't need them to function other supports might need chronos in order to be effective at supporting some might even need morale boost so that they can use their ult effectively so keep in mind that you are credit free but you still do not want to run chronos okay because public games are never going to be as organized as scrims or tournaments or the pro league so keep in mind this can be good but you'll never run it in public games bad 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 okay let's go ahead and skip this card because we're going to be talking about moonlight regeneration cards altogether. we're not gonna go one by one so we'll leave it for later we're going to be talking about crescent this is a one of the weirder cards given that people don't understand the concept of a cooldown reset not a cooldown reduction card now if you're familiar with playing barrack and cassie they have a similar card to this one where they can use their mobility twice after dropping down below a certain amount of health now why is it good on Barrack and Cassie and bad on Io? Well, simple. With Cassie, you're attacking with your dodge roll. You can also dodge with it, okay? But some Cassie players can play exaction and hit their roll shots and get so much value out of them. Even if they're on low on health, they'll just get one more shot that deals more damage, which reduces their overall time to kill. That's great on Cassie some people even can flank with cassie that's how impressive some players are okay it's really hard really really hard but still someone can do it now barrack can heal himself shield himself if he wants to run that card and he also gets to dodge while he's on the point he can go behind cover with the dash he can even extend the dash which is what some good players do now here is the deal you as io are a backliner that's sitting on a side lane when you use your lunar leap you're just going to jump backwards lunar leap has an issue that's worse than furia's mobility which is not only is it backwards it also has vertical momentum to it that you cannot effectively cancel simply put this can make your mobility useless if you're like under a uh, low ceiling or there's something behind you that's kind of a little bit uh, sticking out and that will stop you in your track so leaping twice won't save you however it's not the fact that leaping twice is the issue the issue is the threshold that this can be done at so remember io needs points and a lot of them to be effective i'm going to run the numbers right now just gonna run calculator on windows 10 and show you the numbers so your base health is 2200 you're gonna multiply that by 0 0.15 for this number 15 percent and this activates on 330 and thus you cannot run this at one because it's useless at one point now if you run it at two points which is a waste really you're just gonna have it at 30 percent which is like this 660 well this is kind of sad because well every damage dealer in the game does this much 
well maybe maybe except tiberius who needs to use the sword to finish you off because a chakram will leave you 10 health okay you find a situation where you won't just get one shot easily after using this congrats well what if you wasted three points okay 2200 times 0 0.45 990 so basically a sniper will still kill you on the next shot and it's so predictable y you know uh, snipers familiar with io will simply just aim where you're gonna land anyway or even hit you mid-air it's just that easy really even bk can hit you if he's buffed by genos and still kill you before this card activates before it activates okay so what i'm saying is you won't get this card to activate whatsoever are you gonna run this at four points what are you doing you don't have the budget for this card it's bad by design if 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 one day this card got buffed to be double <laughs> or something in value like i i don't know that can't be done really if if it's at 20 percent at five points it simply says you always have two leaps okay every 15 seconds that's just not gonna happen it's just bad by design now some players will say you don't leap backwards twice yes of course if you're running this for whatever reason you don't leap backwards twice you need to aim each leap in a different direction in order to run away effectively except guess what if you run way to the back line of your team and your team was on the point or in another flank the flanker that was flanking you can just follow you and you're all alone okay are you gonna take a 1v1 against a flanker as a matter of fact let me tell you this if io dies that's just bad even if you're running double support it doesn't matter the flanker killed the most important champion in the enemy team io the the utility of luna gone the dr gone the healing the amazing healing gone so even if they're trading with you it's still good because you are playing io so simply this is please come and kill me i might have a trade with you or maybe if you're androxus you can get a reversal for free on luna since she's a, a stationary target and then just run away from anyone that's following you well that's just sad so this card is bad by design Let's look at this card, which is kind of a joke card. You have 10 ammo and you deal 400 damage per shot and you shoot once every 0.6 seconds. Okay, what's two more ammo gonna do for you? <laughs> Why would you even run this, even as a filler? Why? Just why? <laughs> this is a, such a bad card, by the way. It's a joke card okay so full moon and celestial body we're gonna look at them at the same time now these two cards for me this one is worthless and this one is runnable now this is simply worthless because maybe you need to use your lunar leap for repositioning maybe you need to peek above a wall on bazaar which you do use your mobility for by the way and this card is gonna get wasted so this can be well you can miss the chance to use it which is why i don't run it so i'm going to do the calculation on celestial body which is only 50 health but it does not have an activation requirement okay i'm gonna do the calculation here but it works here let's go ahead and do that so we just have it at 50 i'm gonna run calculator again and we have now two two five zero twenty two fifty health now we're going with haven one as the item you buy at the start of each match now what does haven one mean well a sniper will deal 1200 damage without haven one you reduce that by seven percent which is going to be you multiplying this number by 0 0.93 which is instead of dealing 100% of 1200 you're dealing 100 minus 7% reduced by heaven so each sniper shot deals this much so one sniper shot you're not dead 
two sniper shots you're still not dead because you have two uh, 2250 okay you're not dead thanks to this card now there is a counter argument to running this card which is if you just where is it if you have this card which you will probably have in your loadout simply put if you heal yourself just with heaven one i mean if you heal yourself for 32 you're just gonna live uh, why well the, the same number that's over here right now this one you don't have 2250 health you just need to heal yourself for more than 32 in order to survive the third shot so this card does that okay and i have it at two points if you're still new to playing io put it at three if you want to feel safer okay so completely safe from two shots of a sniper and then you die on the third one you use celestial body if you want to chance it out with not running celestial body it still works you don't need it you just need heaven one of course once you get heaven two you don't even need celestial body but still it's a usable filler okay so let's go back and edit the loadout and look at the next card now i'm gonna talk about these two cards at the same time because these two are a troll build meme only build cards okay these two are absolutely worthless what do i mean by troll and meme by the way well simple enough let's just go ahead and say it like this skywalker lets you float in the air i'm just gonna run it at whatever points i have right now and show you what i mean by that let's just save it and show you the effect uh, better use leap okay uh gotta turn them off you're kind of annoying so if you leap while you're shooting you actually fall slower you can actually watch a frost fangs video let's let's just remove points from here for example where he keeps falling off of the map just because he's using this at five it's a troll build really so i'm basically floating as long as i'm shooting okay the, you're an easy target if you're running this even at lower points okay so uh, this card is only for those cases where you want to play damage aisle which is never the case in neither ranks or casual siege this is a tdm only card okay it doesn't work no matter what you do in siege games and this well you saw that i needed to use lunar leap to gain some air momentum in order to be able to float and this is why they combine these two cards on troll builds so stay away from these two it's useless to reduce your lunar leaps cooldown why is it useless let's just go ahead and uh, return this to what it was while we talk about this so basically your lunar leap is on a 12 second timer now if you've used it to survive from a flanker and did survive your team did help you out and kill that flanker or push them back well you're safe now and you just don't need to leap again until the flanker respawns or regroups with their team you simply just pass the remaining time while you're doing something else you don't need to reduce its cooldown okay no situation would require that even if you use this for repositioning so that you can heal someone like jumping over the wall like i usually do in bazaar well you still do not need to reduce the cooldown don't run this kind of a card it's useless okay let's go ahead and talk about the next card we're gonna start from the left now restored faith is your self-sustain now at two points it's enough even under cauterize three all that you're looking for with this card is keeping yourself in the fight for longer just a little bit now keep in mind that while you're healing someone you're out of combat you're going to get to heal out of combat if you're healing someone while you're relatively safe and in cover okay so at two points it's enough if you're still on your training wheels run this at three and by the way this card activates five times per second so at level one this is 50 per second healing 
at level two it's 100 per second which is gonna be on under code rise three 25 healing per second which isn't anything really it's a low number but it's still good enough okay if you get out of code rise you're gonna get the full value out of it which is gonna be the 100 per second now this is why i just enjoy playing these cards at two which is that i am always nearly always out of color rise you're playing safe okay now sanctum of faith is one of the regeneration cards just like protectors which we skipped and like moonlight garden so we're gonna skip it as well and talk about it later now we're gonna talk about spirit arrows for that i'm going to switch to a loadout that's specifically uh, geared towards a playstyle that currently does not fit the meta it doesn't fit the game because your allies expect you to have luna on the point and not walking around and making space for you that's not how you play with io in ranked so let me show you how i can rotate around the map and please be aware that you're not supposed to be healing luna so i'm healing fernando i moved luna I'm healing not Luna, I'm healing someone else, okay? And she moved. And then... And this is why I call this Luna Walks, okay? Let's go ahead and get it out of here. So, basically, Swift Arrows is also a card that activates 5 times per second. Why am I saying 5 times per second, by the way? Well, you simply heal uh, that many times. Your Moonlight activates that many times per second. That's just the only reason. So, basically, what I'm saying is reduce the cooldown of your redeploy by 1.5 seconds every second. That means that 2 seconds of you healing anyone will have reduced 3 seconds of the cooldown plus you've already passed two seconds you only have three seconds left to move luna again okay so basically this will be good no matter what the situation is if the meta requires luna to be used as an off tank okay keep in mind that this loadout is bad why well if luna dies you've lost five points on this card that requires you to be near luna and three points here you simply cannot afford that okay if luna dies you've just become useless to your team that's why i run this card at four which is what i have the budget for but still we're gonna talk about this card later so don't think that it on its own is going to do anything so this play style does not work right now i just keep the loadout on me in case i'm playing casual with five supports just for fun where i tank with luna okay that's a casual only build that's the only time i would run this now if you have a way of playing with luna in front of you please tell me how you do it in the comments and if you have an example game please post that below i would like to see this work in ranked now let's go ahead and switch to the next card we're going to be talking about let's just switch to our non-essential loadout right now and talk about the next card so swift arrows now this card increases the allies speed by up to 40 percent while you're pocketing them with your moonlight now you might be called out for not running this card so let's go ahead and show you the card it's this one and i'm gonna show you the loadout that i have okay so it's available here it's available here and here i don't have it on this or this or this if i run any of these three in ranked i will be called out for being a bad io player yes why is this card so good well simple enough remember torvald from last split when he had so much value that he was first pick first ban well uh, 
the thing is he had a card called wind dancer that on top of the shielding he does he also grants allies movement speed and i think it was up to 50 percent on him i don't i'm not really sure but still this is good at even 32 percent which is at four points so basically what this allows you to do is become a well the next torvald let's say okay so instead of shielding you're giving you're giving them damage reduction and you're still giving them speed and you're healing them for more than torvald could ever dream of he does have a card that heals but still it's not that great really so basically you're becoming torvald from last split by running this and this is why some players are so toxic about you not running it so please understand that it's just that it gives you snowballing advantage since if you go with your flanker at the start of the round well you're simply gonna snowball way too hard on any squishy who's in the back line who's not going to be able to duel your flanker okay you, not only are you healing them but giving them speed so that they can dodge stuns and other utility and thus win easier and then once you've killed a backliner you can go ahead and kill another one such as well maybe the enemy damage dealer and then you just snowball from there this is why a double support io team has so much potential that's why io is banned in ranked games if you don't ban io you're under so so much pressure now let me explain why people whilst io is so broken and op to some why people sometimes still don't ban io well simple enough if you are first pick and the enemy doesn't ban io you are under a very stressful situation of since the matchmaking right now will put the last pick and the one before him the fourth pick and maybe even the third pick as lower tiered players that are on lower ranks there might be totally new players as a matter of fact if you uh if you're still very new to the game if you're level 15 and just unlocked ranked and just queue randomly if your queue time reaches 12 minutes you're gonna be playing with muru a grandmaster and you're just a level 15 player so the matchmaking has taught players to fear their last pick okay even their fourth pick is feared even their third pick is kind of questionable that's why people duo and go damage slash flank instead of damage or flank slash any other role okay now that does happen that does happen some flankers really like to play with a good support and still it's really always better to have the two carriers the flanker and the damage as the first two picks so understand that the only reason you can play io in ranked is that uncertainty that if the first pick saves io for someone else that io player might be playing a default loadout and be bad okay now in the match that i've shown as an example where i was playing with two grandmasters the enemy team let me as the last pick pick for myself pick io for myself they picked grover because grover is kind of good right now so much utility well that's just the state of the game something that's broken simply enough because of the role they are okay they just don't get saved that often they do get banned i gets banned because what if the enemy team decided to trust their last pick or even their third pick or maybe what if the second pick is playing support and the first pick is the carry so keep that in mind when you're playing now let's go ahead and talk about the next card let's just equip this and click on edit and see what we have left off so we've talked about celestial body and it's uh, how it saves you from snipers we've talked about uh we're saving these three cards for later and we only have moonwalk so moonwalk i'm gonna need to demonstrate it by numbers but i'll just translate it first for each one point you spend on it you have 0 0.3 seconds more of healing and pocketing by the way that pocketing damage reduction wise you can't calculate it really but it's upwards of like i don't know it's upwards of 150 okay so a bk bomb will be reduced by 170 
uh, if you're pocketing someone with goddess blessing okay so 0 0.3 seconds might not seem like much but it's actually good now some players don't run this at higher than two and that's understandable because the maximum value of your uh, healing is actually 6.3 seconds and your default one without even running this is 4.5 so the difference is almost two seconds, but still you gotta know how to calculate that if you want to try out the builds. Of course, as I've said, just use increments of 0.3. I'm going to show you how you calculate percentages right now if you're not familiar with this concept. So your base moonlight, if you read the base kit in the champion screen in the main menu, says you have 150 moonlight and you're going to multiply that by one point whatever the percentage is here so a percentage number is something that you divide by 100 so this is just 0 0.8 because 8 divided by 100 is 0 0.8 so this is how you calculate the total amount of moonlight that you have now let me just go ahead and say this it's not written in the champion menu or even on the wiki but the IO uses 33.33333 whatever moonlight every second this is how you get 4.5 seconds so you have this much moonlight uh, and you use this much per second and thus you can last 4.5 seconds now with the 162 which is level 1 on moonwalk you're going to divide that by 33.3 and that's 4.8 this is why i said it's add 0 0.3 to the base amount of time okay let's go ahead and do it for the maximum amount so 150 and this at max is 40 percent so this is going to be 1.40 so 210 is the maximum amount of moonlight that you can have you're gonna divide that by 33.3 .3. And that's where I got the 6.3 seconds. So this is Moonwalk. Now, there is a greater value than just applying a buff to the amount of time th that you can keep healing people for, which is the fact that these cards right here, this one, are related to the amount of Moonlight you have. It's a percentage of your maximum okay so it's different whether or not you have just the base 150 or perhaps the maximum of 210 it's gonna be different and the difference is a lot it makes a difference no matter how many points you put in this it will make a difference and buff these cards in value so let's go ahead and discuss the three cards which i'm going to put side by side in the loadout right now and let's just go ahead and where is it where is it oh we already have them all just gotta move protectors here so protectors here and whatever here okay so i'm just gonna put everything at three and this is not a viable loadout okay this is just not viable <laughs> well maybe it is maybe but where is your self-sustain there's no self-sustain so let's go ahead and talk about each and every one of them now i've put them all at the three uh three points because look at this this is six percent okay for each hit this is six percent the same amount but this is every second now why are these cards different then well simple the activation requirement is hitting someone and you can hit people every 0 0.6 seconds so basically every 1.2 seconds you get 12 percent moonlight okay every 1.2 this is every second gets only six percent so you can see that this has the potential that if you can afford to hit people you will get nearly double the value of course it's not really double it's a little bit less but still this is why people prefer running this card over protectors as well as the fact that protectors needs you to have luna on you while every player is gonna be so salty if you don't put luna on the point 24 7 by the way even if dredge is on the enemy team people get triggered because they don't understand that luna will die to one broadside and one left click from him even tara can just throw the bomb away on luna and the point and just let luna die on her own really even without running 
burn monster, Tara might not even consider shooting at Luna because the point tank on the enemy team will finish her off. Well, that's the idea of why this card is kind of bad in the meta. Now, this card is very controversial. Why? Well, at max, it's 5%. Let me just pull up the calculator and show you how small that number is, okay? On paper, this is only on paper. So, your maximum possible moonlight is 210, meaning that 5% of that is 10.5 units, which if we divide by this number is only a third of a second of healing after wearing one second this is only on the card you've got to remember this now let's go back to the number we had 10.5 points of moonlight regenerated by this you've got to add the passively and without this card regenerated moonlight that happens every second which is 25 so the difference is if you wait one second with this at five you will have one full second of healing if you don't have it you will have nearly 0 0.75 seconds of healing so this is the difference that this card makes it's not much it's in fact way too low to be considered of value however if you look away from the numbers and test it out yourself let me just go ahead and switch to this i've already done it so basically what i've been doing to test this card out let's just remove some points from here from somewhere like the card itself what i was doing is i've used a timer and then with the card at five with the card at zero with moon uh, with moonwalk at five and moonwalk at zero i've tested every possible well not it's not a cooldown but the time needed to rebuild my entire moonwalk so this is actually what i came up with so moonwalk on its own doesn't affect your passive regeneration this might be a bug actually because the wiki says you regenerate an eighth of your moonlight per second this is kind of weird okay let me explain why it's 25 units per second actually now, Io, before this patch came out, used to have 200 base moonlight. If we divide that by 8, it's 25. This is the actual value that's being used right now. If this gets nerfed after being noticed, maybe you will tell this uh, people that this is a bug. This will become 18. Okay, it's not exactly 18. It's a little bit more than 18 units. Okay, but... I don't know if this is intended or a bug however moonwalk isn't affected uh of, sorry moonlight isn't going to be affected by moonwalk you're not gonna regenerate more if you have more moonlight it's not right what's written on the wiki also you don't consume a sixth of whatever moonlight you have you consume only 33.3 otherwise moonwalk would be useless so basically without moonwalk moonlight takes six seconds to regenerate from zero however using moonwalk 5 makes it take a little bit less than 8.5 seconds so basically you will need to wait for longer if you have more moonlight which is kind of natural okay so this is your cooldown that you have to wait for after running completely out of moonlight without buffing it whatsoever once you buff it completely and have the maximum amount you're gonna wait 8.5 seconds now this is where sanctum of face gets taken into consideration without running moonwalk whatsoever you need four seconds to fill up that's two seconds less okay that's good that is good but you need to run this at five its value is questionable at less than five even at five it is still questionable now with full moon walk it takes six seconds and this is great actually so you've basically reached this number which is on 150 units and this is on 210 units of moonlight okay so sanctum is viable however if you're in a situation that 
warrants you to be able to use deployables and shields on the enemy side to regenerate then moonlight garden is always going to be the best one so let's review the three cards right now you can use this twice almost twice every second it's twice every 1.2 seconds which is why i write this and protectors is going to require you to play in a way that's hated by others it's not a wrong way to play we're going to talk about that in a bit okay but still its value is less than half this or nearly half this one okay and then you've got sanctum which we've already discussed the numbers on okay so let's go ahead and talk about viable playstyles but i'm just gonna fix this loadout since i don't want this to be like that so let's just go ahead and put the cards now one thing that i need to explain which is the naming that i've used here so this uh, translates to as long as you can hit two shots you're going to have 2.5 seconds of healing every 1.2 seconds now this is not only because you're running sanctum and moonlight but because we're taking into account your passive regeneration which is going to be 25 per second so keep this in mind this loadout is the perfect training wheels for when you want to be starting with io you start with this loadout now you can also reduce this by one and increase this by one to be safer however the numbers will change since you've nerfed all three of these cards because this one affects the other two so keep that in mind now to explain why i run these two loadouts in ranked well simple enough this is only when i'm running double support with grover ying is kind of over exaggerating it since i'm relying on them to passively heal me now grover is just gonna heal you by you standing near him doesn't matter if he presses q or not and activates blossom no the passive healing on him is enough for you to sustain yourself that's why i only have this at one point so i might have just removed it completely in my guide but really you need it at one point just in case grover is dead and you need just a little bit more health to survive one more shot so basically why i'm saying that this is op well i've got all my points spent here on swift arrows so i am the main healer the main support and what this allows me to do is dedicate myself to be the pocketer for the flanker okay i can heal others but i'm pocketing the flanker the most now why is this good well simple enough i'm pretending to be torvald from last split back when he was first pick or ban that's the case so why is it so basically wind dancer which is a card on torvald gave your allies i think it was up to 50 percent movement speed this is nearly the same thing except you add damage reduction instead of the shield and the healing is more than what life giver a card on torvald could give so basically this is you pretending to be torvald now why would i want to do this only in double supports other than the reduced self-sustain well simple enough because i am dedicating myself to the flanker okay i'm still not an off support i do damage yes i might just steal some of the flankers kills just because i need one more second of healing them and pocketing them yes that happens a lot to me okay but this enables you to snowball early game you have so much advantage so try this out if you want to have way more fun than usual while playing io now this loadout well it's a little bit different from the one i showed in the video where i'm playing with grandmasters because i've moved one point from moonlight garden to moonwalk and when i did the math i didn't lose any value out of this card well if you watched that video and check the comments people told me that i haven't used this at all and i counted how much moonlight i actually got back with moonlight garden and it was well around 450 moonlight which is like around 
uh, if 210 is 6, it was l around 12 seconds. Uh, it was exactly 13 seconds, by the way. The entire match, an 8 minute match, I was not able to use shields or anything else to regenerate my uh, moonlight. Well, uh, that's kind of sad, really. But still, once you've moved one point from this one to this one, it's all good. You don't need to worry about that. Your passive regeneration is good enough if your team is doing their best at staying alive. So this is my go-to loadout when I'm playing ranked. Now you've noticed that I also have swift arrows but at 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about why I keep this, this and this. And of course, as I've said, this is just the training wheels loadout. Okay, it's almost the same as this one, except there's no filler. This is at three, it's at four here. And well, we have a different card right here. Okay, so basically, let's just tell you what the name of our training wheels loadout is. Well, for each 1.2 seconds spent shooting at stuff, which are two shots, by the way, you get two and a half seconds of healing back that's how this works okay so i've named it like this because what if i'm so afraid of losing my moonlight so this is an active playstyle. okay so be careful if you just want to play this or this it's up to you they're nearly identical except that i really like being active and still being a little bit more productive even if i'm not but still i'd rather be active now let's go ahead and talk about the three loadouts over here so i've named this bad point tank simply because i usually would get a situation where our last pick goes ahead and picks barrack or inara but they are one well maybe their level is really really not that assuring and two, when you get in the game and hold tab, you can see that they're using the default loadout, which is going to tell you so much. What do I mean by that? Well, someone using the default loadout is just going to stack on the point no matter what. So whether or not Luna is on the point, they will also be on the point. You just lost the utility. You know, when Luna is on the point, your tank, even if they are a point tank, will be pushing with you not on the point okay so basically i've named it bad point tank because i no longer need to put luda on the point now i will be called out for it okay and and also i don't have swift arrows which is the speed card and i will be also called out for that but the thing is would i rather save my team and still earn the win or would i rather just give up and hope for the best that's the reason i keep this loadout on me so basically if luna dies i'm going to lose these five points and this one point because i need luna on me at all times i cannot put her on the point without losing so much utility i need this regeneration up all the time now this actually lets you keep the entire team including that new player alive for way longer than you should be if you had luna away and used sanctum of light uh, sorry sanctum of faith at five this is why i use this loadout specifically when i'm using luna as a backliner now of course once you've pushed and captured i mean then yes you're going to put luna on the point and you're going to overextend but you will still have enough regeneration through this card to keep your team alive anyway so it's a defensive loadout now since luna is on you of course you're gonna have the stun ready or not depending on whether or not you hit an enemy instead of shields with this card well that stun can save you from a flanker and it'll give your team one full second to come back and help you not to mention that actually you might just win the 1v1 
if and only if that flanker misses one shot they just need to miss one shot for you to win okay in most cases so keep this in mind you would only want to use this when you know you have a bad point tank not necessarily bad as in the player but what if you had let's say ash as a point tank okay that's like sad really okay even half shell makoa might be bad so keep in mind you need more moonlight when you have a bad point tank as in a player using default loadouts or picked up a weird tank as a point tank like for example ruckus super squishy okay now let's go ahead and look at this one now we've already demonstrated luna walks i've already asked you if this works for you in ranked please tell me in the comments and if you have a game for it show me that now this i named it untested sniper only because i've only had the chance to test it twice now simple enough what if i can't even dream of peeking to shoot shields or deployables or anything now this simply relies on me having luna alive as well same as the last one since i'm expecting a sniper i'm using celestial body at one and haven one is my go-to item now still even though i am facing against a sniper i'm only running this at two since even at five it's not going to save you from more than two shots okay it's just self-sustained you don't need any more of it and i've maxed out sanctum of faith to cut down some time from the time i need to regenerate from zero to full with these two cards up you will gain 15 percent of your moonlight every second which is well on paper it's not that much but in practice since you will be gaining well every second you're gonna be gaining one fifth anyway this translates to gain 35 percent of your moonlight by just waiting one second now let me just show you how fast that is so i'm just gonna have luna near me now one thing more let's just do this okay this is how fast it is okay you're just not doing anything except have luna near you i need to stress out this point it's written on the wiki now this says you regenerate 10 percent moonlight while near luna however this does not happen while you're actually healing someone so it doesn't slow down the rate of consumption you will always consume it at the same rate no matter what keep this in mind you do not regenerate moonlight when you're healing someone not a single source can do that okay well thanks for watching and hope you've enjoyed this video enjoy paladins